I mean, I've given multiple talks on this situation. I've, I've done webinars on it, right? So the issue that I find over and over again that is most problematic is two. They have two for you. One, not giving adequate biopsies for alopecia. So if you're going to be biopsying the scalp and you're not giving an adequate biopsy, you're not going to get an answer at all or at least a meaningful answer. So having enough tissue to appropriately get the specimen cut the way it needs to be cut to give you the best answer, you need to have at least one, if not two, four millimeter punch biopsies. This is something that, hands down, is very difficult to get. When you're already dealing with a traumatized patient that has hair loss, and then you're telling them you need to do additional procedures on their scalp and cut out pieces of tissue, put sutures in, this is also very traumatic for them. So if you're going to go through this whole ordeal, make sure that it's going to be an adequate biopsy to give you a meaningful answer. So not giving adequate biopsies for alopecia is one. The second one is inappropriately doing punch biopsies for pigmented lesions. I know this has been like the dogma forever, but it's not correct. So unless you can get the entire pigmented lesion out with a reasonable punch, I'm not talking like huge, you know, excision. I want four millimeter, five millimeter, six max, right? If you can get it all out, fine. But the most important thing with pigmented lesions is breadth over depth. And so if you're punching a large pigmented lesion, studies have shown you are going to be undercalling this and it's going to be not just upstaged, but entirely different diagnosis if you were to take most of the lesion out instead of just a small punch of it, okay? So it's so important to not just assume you have to do a punch biopsy for a pigmented lesion. So if you can just do those two types of biopsies appropriately, it will save you so much heartache as well as the patient, give the best patient outcome.